In this video, we're going to take a walk along High Park Street in Toxteth, Liverpool. And at one end, we have a junction with Princess Road. And at the other end, we have a junction with Park Road. So we're going to walk the full length from the Princess Road end. We're going to take in a, a quick visit to Ringo Starr's old house and have a look at the mural on a wall at the uh, entrance to the road where we used to live. Um, Ringo Starr was a, a drummer in the Beatles, if you didn't, anyway. We're going to uh, walk along and have a look at his house. So High Park Street is quite a important road to Liverpool historically because in this particular area a lot of Welsh people settled and they were builders and they built a lot of the houses and a lot of the property in Liverpool at that particular time. So when you take all these streets together, collectively, they're known as... I can't remember what they're called now. The Welsh streets. This is High Park Street in Toxteth, Liverpool, and behind me is Princess Road. I'm going to walk the full length to its other junction with Park Road. So although this video will probably have the title The Welsh Streets, it's probably more about High Park Street and the various architecture that makes this road pretty special. Going to look at some of the changes that have happened over the years and some of the regeneration which has happened in its very recent past. There is a real mix of architectural styles along this street and we're going to walk both sides starting on the left hand side and the Welsh streets and this is a list of the names of those streets. So we're coming up to the artwork on the side of this building here, uh, the corner of Winstay Street, and it's by an artist called Paul Curtis. And if you'd like to see him paint this sign in a, um, a very quick YouTube video, uh, his channel is called Paul Curtis Artwork. It's uh, a time-lapse video. Some of the houses in this area suffered bomb damage during World War II and they were rebuilt in a style more befitting the 1950s than the earlier Victorian houses. So some of the houses on the right hand side here date from the 1950s. By around 1850 there were over 20,000 Welsh builders working in Liverpool and they required housing. So land in Toxteth was leased for a housing development project with the streets designed by Richard Owens. They were built by David Robertson's son and these two had met previously while working on a building in Abergelly in Wales. Through his collaboration with David Roberts Owens designed over 10,000 terraced houses in Liverpool, particularly those in this area and surrounding areas of Toxteth. As we come towards the end of the 19th century, there were over 80,000 Welsh workers living in uh, Liverpool and these Welsh migrants made significant contributions to the urban development of Victorian Liverpool. As I said earlier, some of the properties were lost during the bombing of World War II 
and these were replaced by 1950s and 1960s uh, style housing and um, that type of terraced house was pretty typical of this particular period but it wasn't in keeping with the original architecture. You can see the difference in the styles the mid 19th century and the mid 20th century where the houses are slightly larger. Next left turn is Powys Street and uh, this street doubled as Watery Lane in the TV series Peaky Blinders. So this street doubled as the um, home of Peaky Blinders leader Thomas Shelby. This street wasn't refurbished until 2017 so no filming took place here after that date. This photograph shows Powys Street in its Peaky Blinders days and you'll notice that on both sides of the street the houses have been painted black at least halfway down the uh, street both sides and I guess this was to replicate the um, grime that the buildings would have suffered in the heavy industry uh, of a Birmingham street and also it made it look a little bit more foreboding. And this is the other end of Power Street and uh, some filming going on. A close-up here of some of the leading actors and of course the building at the end of Power Street doesn't actually exist. Well, not in Power Street anyway. It's just computer-generated graphics. It does look pretty realistic though. Now you might notice the mural on the other side of the road of um, Beatles drummer Ringo Starr. And we'll have a look at that side of the road on our walk back. But the next turn left here is Madrin Street. And this is where Ringo Starr lived for the first four years of his life. We'll have a stroll down Madrin Street and have a look at Ringo's parents house and as I said he lived here until he was four years old. Now his name back then was Richard Starkey his dad's name was also Richard and um, I guess now he's called Sir Richard Starkey anyway better known as Ringo. So when he was around about four years old his mother and father fell out and Ringo and his mum moved to a house on the other side of High Park Street and we'll visit that one on our walk back. So a short walk up the road past uh, Ringo's mural takes us into the next left turn which is Kimnon Street. I don't know whether I've visited these streets on uh, Bin Man Day there seems to be a lot of bins in uh, in every street we turn into. Okay, so that's Kimnall Street. And uh, just going to take a look back at where we've come from. In 1970, Ringo released a solo album called Sentimental Journey. And the building there with the mural on featured as the cover to his album. So this was the Empress pub and uh, it must have meant a lot to him. He would have seen this every day uh, in his early life, I guess up until being in his 20s. But the photo doesn't only show the Empress pub, it also shows the street where Ringo moved to with his mum after his mum fell out with his father. That's Admiral Grove on the right hand side of the pub and we'll take a look down there later in the video as I said earlier on our walk back. Anyway to uh, carry on, during the early 1970s the Welsh Streets Residents Association was formed 
uh, and as part of a campaign by the residents to seek help to improve the area. They were worried at the time that some of the houses in this area could become derelict. During a public meeting in September 1973, a motion calling for the area to be designated as an improvement area was supported by 60 tenants who were in attendance. The motion was followed by a wider survey of all 780 homes to ascertain the options for all the residents. Demolition had already started in the early 1970s, especially on the right hand side of the road as we look at it here, uh, and especially on Joe Liff Street and Foxhill Street. Those houses, uh, those streets and uh, others to the south uh, had already been redeveloped by the end of the 1980s. As I said earlier, we'll have a look at those on the way back. These railings on the left here either keep people out of or keep children in St. Silla's School. It's a Church of England primary school. We're heading towards a junction now where High Park Street meets Admiral Street. And we've got two more Welsh streets left off our list of nine to see. And then we'll go and see some different architecture. Now we're pretty much up to the junction and if we take a look to our right we'll see Admiral Street Police Station and to our left, I've actually crossed the road here, this is the direction we need to go to see the two remaining streets. Okay so basically in case you've got lost uh, we've walked past St. Silas on our left hand side and we've taken a left and uh, the police station is behind us at the junction. There's a mix here of terrace houses on the left hand side which we're walking past and pretty new builds on the um, on the right hand side. I'm not quite sure when they date to. They could be 1980s. Coming up to the junction of street number 8 in our collection of 9 and this one is called Penguin Street. On the left hand side there you'll see the railings. They're the um, railings of St. Silla's School. So this would be the back of the school I guess. Right so we'll head back onto Admiral Street and uh, piece of green land on the corner there which needs a little bit of love. We're heading off to number nine of nine Welsh streets. I don't know exactly what this is on the left hand side behind the railings it's not actually marked on the map with a name but um, certainly a little bit overgrown in places. Anyway this is our final Welsh street here on the left hand side and it's called Treeborth Street. Now while the houses have been refurbed and look quite nice, this building on the end needs a new life. Looks like someone here didn't vote for Boris. We'll just carry on around the corner and uh, have a look to see what's here. Bit of greenery on the right hand side there. And the pub on the corner, if I remember correctly, is or was, I think it was the Queen's Arms. I'm not even sure it's open anymore. If you're looking to buy a shop, there's one there on our left. There's no way of telling really whether that's open or not. Looks like it might be. Anyway, this road here is Devonshire Road West. And that building on the right, which looks like it's been a church, 
is called Lily May Muse. It's a residential complex. This road to the left here runs down the back of the Welsh streets that we visited earlier. So we're back at Penguin Street and we're going to go to the junction of Admiral Street where the police station is. Okay, so we are now back at the junction of High Park Street and Admiral Street. That's the um, police station on the left there. And now it's on our right. Anyway, so we're going to walk the rest of the road up to its junction with Park Road. Now on our left hand side here there's not a great deal to see but there are some quite interesting buildings coming up on the right hand side. Now the first one we'll come to is Mount Carmel Parish Centre and then Our Lady of Mount Carmel Roman Catholic Church. So Our Lady of Mount Carmel is a Roman Catholic Church church was founded in uh, 1878 and the architect was a James O'Byrne and in December 2009 the church and the adjoining presbytery gained grade 2 listed status and the church is built from red brick with sandstone details Let's cross over and take a closer look. It also gives us a little bit of a uh, chance to take a look back down High Park Street and uh, see where we've come from. Now the next piece of architecture on this short run on the right hand side of um, High Park Street is High Park Reservoir which is also known as Toxteth Reservoir. Now I would have known it as Toxteth Reservoir, that's what I've always called it. Um, it's a disused reservoir and um, the water for the reservoir was enclosed in a brick built sandstone clad building which is if you haven't guessed already what we're walking past right now this is a, a grade 2 listed building as well it hasn't been used for water storage uh, since 1997 but apparently you can hire it for events the reservoir was opened in 1853 and apparently it was holding approximately uh, 2 million gallons of water uh, fed from Rivington Pike in the Pennine Moors. And apparently spring water from a spring in Lodge Lane in Liverpool. Some of the filming for Peaky Blinders was also done here. And I meant to say that the building became grade 2 listed in 1985. Now the next building along is or was Toxteth Town Hall. It was formerly known as Toxteth Park Public Offices um, but now it has been turned into a uh, community centre and again this building is Grade 2 listed. It was built in 1866 and the architect was Thomas Leyland became Grade 2 listed in March 1975. Government offices were needed at that particular time uh, because of the population growth uh, largely associated with uh, the growth of Liverpool docks. The building uh, served as a place of um, meeting for the parish council up until around 1922 and then it became a registry office till around about 1950 and I think it was also used as a police station during the Second World War. 
So this low modern looking building is Toxteth Job Centre and this building has obviously been a church at some time but I think it's been converted into uh, living accommodation either uh, flats that kind of thing uh, if you know what the church was called before it was changed that would be interesting um, drop a comment in the comment section below and this is the junction with Park Road to the left would be Egbeth Garston speak that direction and if we turn right we will be heading towards Liverpool city centre right so time to take a walk back down High Park Street towards its junction with Princess Road and uh, this is the church that I mentioned and on the other side of the road is Tesco so this is the job centre and we're going to be heading towards the junction with Admiral Street Right, we're back at the junction with High Park Street and Admiral Street Police Station on the left hand side there and a short walk show you what the houses look like here and this is from the other end so we're now looking back towards that junction and the police station would be on our right okay so let's go back to some history of this area and around about half of the houses which uh, were constructed by Richard Owens around Liverpool had already been lost by the early 21st century with the original clearance plans accounting for the loss of over 10% of the remaining houses. Now in 2006 the then leader of the opposition which would have been the Conservative Party uh, a guy called David Cameron if anyone remembers him uh, visited the streets with Michael Heseltine and he was baffled by the proposed clearance plans which were in place at the time so the area went through a decline during the latter part of the 20th century with half of Viola Street being demolished and properties gradually becoming derelict as residents moved out but most of the houses were still inhabited until early 2007 in the early 2000s the housing market renewal initiative program was launched intended to renew housing stock across the country and raise house values in perceived areas of deprivation with the Well Streets area incorporated into a renewal program survey in 2003 found that 72% of respondents were at least satisfied with their home and over half were at least satisfied with the quality of the housing in the area whilst only 1% believed demolition would improve the area the renewal programme's propositions were to demolish 500 Victorian terraced houses and replace with 370 new built houses with a smaller scale refurbishment elsewhere. I think to put things simply there was a divided population here those who wanted new homes and those who wanted their old homes refurbished. From what I gather the council preferred to go down the demolition route We'll take a little break in the, uh, the history because our next left turn is Ringo Starr's second childhood home which is in Admiral Grove. So we're back at the Empress Pub and we're going to take a look at the mural which is on the wall and basically all around the building. The mural is the work of Liverpool artist John Culshaw. Initially he set out to make a Beatles themed mural. It wasn't going to be just about Ringo 
but because Ringo had connections in this area, living over the road and living in Admiral Grove here, he went ahead and made the mural simply about Ringo. The mural took around about two weeks to paint, which is amazing really. It took me three weeks to paint our living room. Anyway, the mural was unveiled on the 7th of March 2022. So Ringo was born on the 7th of July 1940 and he first lived in number 9 Madrin Street which we looked at earlier. He was the only child of confectioners Richard and Elsie. As I said earlier Ringo and his mum moved to this house which is coming up on the right hand side, uh, the white one with the uh, pink window sill and other details. Both Ringo's houses attract the uh, Beatles fans from all over the world. You often see taxi drivers here who specialise in the uh, Beatles tours giving an explanation of where he used to live to a couple of punters and also the Beatle bus comes down here so seeing as we're here we might as well do the touristy thing and have a look at Ringo Starr's second childhood home I think Ringo lived here until he became famous with the Beatles Right, let's make our way back to High Park Street. So where were we? Basically, we're in a situation, I think, where Liverpool's council wanted to clear all the old terraced houses on this particular area. And many of the residents wanted to stay and have their homes refurbished. And various options were explored over the years, in the early 2000s, and it all became a, a little bit of a political football. 2011, Secretary of State for Housing, uh, Eric Pickles, if you remember him, quashed the planning permission for the demolition and uh, required an environmental impact assessment. So new proposals for the demolition of 250 houses were endorsed by Liverpool Mayor Joe Anderson in 2012. Uh, the housing minister at that time, Grant Shapps, who visited the area, uh, announced the retention of 9 Madeline Street, which was Ringo's house, and 15 adjacent homes. Move on to 2013 and... Uh, Plans were submitted suggesting uh, 150 houses could be built but only 40 would be refurbished. The plans ultimately fell through when in January 2015, following a public inquiry, Eric Pickles halted the demolition plans. Pickles agreed with the argument put forward by Save Britain's Heritage and the National Trust. Uh, specifically in relation to Madrin Street in that the demolition of much of the street together with the wider Welsh Street region would significantly harm the ability to understand and appreciate this part of Liverpool's Beetle heritage. A pilot scheme in 2017 involved the refurbishment of houses in Viola Street to demonstrate how the houses could be remodelled and to determine public opinion and uptake. Renovations involved remodelling some of the floor plans and knocking through to adjacent homes to create a larger house, whilst retaining some of the original houses in order to cater for various residential requirements. Following the success of the pilot scheme, Refurbishment of other Welsh streets was approved, meaning that 300 homes would be refurbished or constructed. The council hoped that around 75% of existing house stock could be retained, with over two thirds available to rent and around 10% available to purchase. 
In 2018, the contractor, Place First, won the Refurbishment Project of the Year Award. In 2019, the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors said this. The Welsh Streets is a fine example of how to breathe new life into tired, run-down terraced housing. Instead of bringing in the bulldozers, sacrificing the established street layout and embedding energy into existing buildings. Place First has imaginatively refurbished the houses and surrounding areas to create desirable modern homes in an attractive community setting. All these houses which we've been walking past are on the opposite side to the uh, refurbished Welsh streets. These are all new builds um, replacing terraced houses which were pulled down in the 1970s. Whether you like the new builds or whether you like the refurbished terraced houses better, I guess will come down to personal taste. But let's have a look back at what the area used to look like. And this is Winstay Street in 1969. This is Madrin Street again in 1969, the road where Ringo lived until he was four. And this is Ringo's house in Madrin Street before it was refurbished. And this is Kimnell Street in 1969. This is Real Last Street, I hope I've said that correctly, and again this is 1969. And again a photo taken in 1969, this time Guerda Street. Okay, thank you very much for watching, and we'll catch up soon.